Hi, I'm Jack. I'm an artist. I go by the name JPR Stitch. Uh, my art is predominantly freehand machine embroidery, where I just sit at the sewing machine and sew and create quite relaxed um, embroideries. The secondary artworks are pieces that come directly from the embroidery, so they're either printmaking, where I use the embroideries as printing plate and create a create runs of prints which are either colour or embossings. Um, but then I've also had um, embroideries cast into bronze as well. I think for my actual artwork itself it's more my past experiences of the art market and the art world and studying art that is more of an influence on what I do. So I've spent a huge amount of time being involved in the art world not as an artist. So I've done a degree, a master's, a PhD, all focusing on the art market. I've lectured on the art market, I've spoken at conferences about the artist's role in the art world, I've operated as an art dealer, I've been a funding consultant, loads of different things. And I, within all of that I was making my art but it was always in the background. It was very complicated, very deep, everything needed kind of an essay to explain what the theoretical stance behind it was and how it fitted into the context of art history and all of that and I think that as soon as I put all of the, that to one side and just started sewing I became so much freer in what I could do so I think I've had to almost become an expert in the art world to feel confident enough to make art that's simple and doesn't need an explanation. I think the tactile nature of the embroidery and the kind of the softness of the fabric, for me it's important to actually be in that process of moving the fabric around, touching the fabric, feeling the vibrations of the machine, that, that it's quite a, um, you get a lot of feedback from the machine through your hands and you get a lot of feedback through the embroidery so you can feel where stitches have been missed and areas need some more stitching. So I think that, that tactile nature is important to inform me of how I'm making my art. But then it also connects you much more to the physical art itself. It, it, you're, you're, you're actually holding it, you're touching it. When you're painting, a lot of the time, unless you're painting with your hands yourself, it's the brush that's touching the canvas. It's not, you're, you're not actually holding it. I see my process not particularly sewing but more as drawing and it's more of an inverted drawing process where rather than moving the pencil and the paper stay still I'm holding the paper and the pencil staying still so I'm drawing with the paper or the fabric. Embroidery is a big part of my practice, printmaking is a big part of my practice and social media is also a big part of my practice. I don't see it as something separate that just markets my art. I see it as an integral part of my practice and I think if I stopped printmaking I wouldn't feel fully fulfilled. If I stopped sewing I wouldn't feel fully fulfilled and I think it's the same with sharing my art on social media. So it's not just a marketing thing, it's very much part of my practice. And I see it as a daily diary, a journal of what I'm doing. So I don't use a sketchbook. I've never used a sketchbook. I don't really like that kind of process of recording how I'm developing and sharing ideas. But Instagram has become that sketchbook for me. So I video what I'm doing. I write down some thoughts, some notes, some something that's, that's in my mind on that day. And it's become a way of documenting my practice and recording my practice. I think because my art is very slow to make and quite meditative, by actually recording that and sharing the videos, they almost become artworks in their own right, that people see them, they feel that, or I hope they feel that calmness, that meditation through just watching these short snippets. So the piece in this year's art trail is one of my collection artworks which is consists of 12 individual stitching. So I make art generally in three sizes, a small one, a medium one and a large one. And I make them like that just because I'm constrained by the machine. So going any bigger becomes problematic to fit it in the actual machine. But I want to make art that's much bigger. 
so I came up with the idea of collection artworks which are individual artworks which can stand alone as a single piece but then they can come together to create something more so the collection piece that I've got in um, the museum at the minute is um, a collection of 12 artworks that come together to create a much bigger design. The design flows between each artwork. So you can look at each piece individually, they're spaced with a little white gap so they are individual artworks but then they're shown in a grid so the piece becomes, um, it, it kind of becomes bigger because of it's bigger than its individual parts. So I think the Arts Trail has enormous ambition and I think over the last three years the ambition has grown even bigger than the Arts Trail probably was ever imagined and I think that's absolutely amazing that the first year was great but the second year was far better, the third year is even better and the years after I'm sure will surpass the achievements of this year and I think the fact that it's been done for the benefit of the arts, the arts in Shrewsbury, the town, the local community, both the community of artists and the wider community engaging with high art is really quite admirable because it's not done for um, economic reasons, it's done to bring art and celebrate art to Shrewsbury and it's done to celebrate the arts ecosystem of Shrewsbury as well. I think it does a huge amount of public benefit for the people of Shrewsbury but I think it also does a huge amount of benefit for the art world to see that, that especially the London art world to see that there is high, high art happening and high quality art events happening outside of London. <laughs>